to Library Connection. I'm your hostess, Mandy Cantrell. I'm Youth Services Director at the Bibi Comer Memorial Library. Joining me today is our director, Tracy Thomas, mm -hmm. and we are glad to be here to talk about the history of the Comer li Library, and we're very uh, grateful to TV47 for allowing us to talk about our events and things we are, that are going on with us and in the community. So, well, Tracy, thank you for being here. Thank you. It's, it's <laughs> nice to be on this side of the table. Uh, yeah, I bet it is. It's nice. And I have to tell you, people come in the library very often and just, you know, come up the stairs and, and downstairs, I'm sure, too, and just say, this is a beautiful place. You know, how long has your library been here? So this is going to be a great refresher for me because we're asked quite often, how old is this building, about the renovations and things. So glad well, to hear. I'll start by telling you, um, you know, my first impression of, of our library was actually when I was, oh gosh, I was in the fourth grade when my okay. family uh, moved to Sylacauga. Uh -huh. And so my mom used to just take us to the library all the time. And I remember walking in up there and thinking, this place is huge. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a wonderful place. And we loved coming and getting books. And um, I just feel like we're so blessed to get to work in that place yes. every day. Uh -huh. So um, it... I did a program a couple of weeks ago for the Progressive Study Club, and they wanted to know about the history of the library. So as we put this together, I thought, you know, our library has got such a wonderful, mm -hmm. rich history that it's it's nice for us to tell the story every once in it a is. while, just so that it people is. in the community know when you see that building, it is truly a reflection of what lots of people in this city wanted and worked hard for yes. and hoped for. And so we'll, we'll go ahead and get started. And I, and I will tell you that when um, the library um, first got organized was in 1935, and that was by mm -hmm. members of the Rotary Club. So yeah. when you come into the library and you see that we have the what we call the Rotary Room, mm -hmm. it's over where the magazines uh -huh. are at, it's because the Rotary <laughs> Club was the first group of people that stepped up and said, hey, we would really like to see a library in this community. And they organized it. And so as you can see, you know, this is an article from the Sylacauga Advance, August 15th, 1935. And it says the Rotary Club, realizing the necessity of a public library in Sylacauga, has started such a movement and now has quite a selection of books on hand and are now operating the library in a small way. And at this time in 1935, they had the library, this library movement, as they call it, set up in a room in the old night hotel. Oh, yes. And okay. so as I was reading through this history, that was one of the things that really surprised uh -huh. me was how many homes our library has had. Um, it has moved quite a bit. So that was kind of eye-opening. But the, the library was one room in the Knight Hotel, and this was as organized by the Rotary Club. One of the things that I think is so fascinating about this and about the timing for this is that people were just coming out of the Great Depression, yes. you know, and, and so here we are coming out of the Great Depression. People are trying to rebuild their lives. And there's a group of forward-thinking people in our community that are thinking we need a library. Wow. So that's just always so Im impressive to me, and I think it's testament to the spirit of the people yes. that live here in Sylacauga then and now um, for what they want in their community. Well, then um, this this movement, this library movement, get, began to gain steam. And as you can see in this newspaper ad, which I love looking at these old oh, yeah. um, newspaper articles, this was from <clears throat> October 1936. And this is when other local civic clubs, 23 other civic oh clubs God. to be exact, mm -hmm. got together and, and started, you know, seeing what the Rotary Club was doing and, hey, the Rotary Club is doing this movement to try to start a library, and we think that we want to be in on that too. So in October of 1936, these 23 civic clubs got together, had a meeting, and they elected a library committee. Now the committee members were Mr. S.O. White, he was the chairman, Ms. J. Lloyd Shin, who was the secretary, Ms. Clyde Arnold was the treasurer, and Mr. Avery Lyles was the chairman of the location committee. And I got tickled when I saw that because I thought, you know, wow, he had his work cut out for him because they moved quite often. <laughs> so they got together and they formed this library committee. Now, this is in October of 1936. Uh -huh. The very next month in November of 1936, if you will look at 
at this article right here, it says the time is ripe for the formation of a library. And I love that wording. Um, so these people got together and in November 1936, the very next month, uh -huh. the city council appointed the first library board. So this is when the library first became an official part of the city. The city appointed the board. Now, Mr. Ogletree was the mayor and the board members were F.H. Craddock, Mr. Yeah. S.O. White, um, Ms. J.E. Jordan, <clears throat> Ms. M.G. Hightower, Ms. C.S. Northern, and Mr. H.A. Parker was the council representative. And you can see some of their pictures uh -huh. there. But this is the group that was the first officially formed uh, library board. Now, the library had very quickly outgrown the room that they had in the night hotel. Sure. And they were already making plans, and they moved to the third floor of the Masonic building. Okay. So here again, we've got another <laughs> move. And so when the library officially opened in November of 1936, they had had a book shower and the book shower was 164 books and they had 167 books that were donated from the Birmingham Public Library. Oh, right. So what a neat partnership to have in your history mm -hmm. that you partnered with one of the biggest libraries in Alabama yeah. to get your service up and running in 1936. And I love the great community support. Our community still supports the library. Absolutely mm -hmm. and I, I've enjoyed reading that as I go through this history. One mm -hmm. of the things that was significant as I was reading through is that the library became part of the city government then as well okay. and they received $250 to purchase books oh, wow. and then they were given a $50 per month maintenance fee to help keep right. the library up and to maintain the book collection and then they had of course the first librarian was Miss Edwina Jordan okay. and Miss um, Jordan did a wonderful job but she too experienced the same growing pains and one month mm -hmm. later by December of 1936 they were already having to move to a again. room in the First <laughs> National Bank building. So they, they experienced it again. And at this point, there, were, there was $500 in the library's mm -hmm. treasury, according to the records. And they also secured a membership for Ms. Jordan in the American Library Association. And that's a membership that we've kept up until uh -huh. this day. So that really and truly established her as an official librarian. Yes. Yes. So... What a vision, too. Yes. <laughs> that's great. And moving so often, that's wonderful. <laughs> growing, growing. Um, and then, after they moved into this, uh, the First National Bank building, there were plans being drawn up for the new city hall. And so, as those plans were being drawn up, they made arrangements for the library to be a part of that as well. Good, so, you've got good. another move in there. And Miss H.L. Castleman was the new librarian there from April 1937 on after Miss Jordan resigned. Um, or retired. So around this time, there were the WPA projects were mm -hmm. happening um, with FDR. And, and I'm going to tell a little bit about the history of that because it's a very significant part of the library's history. Why don't we take a quick break before okay. we get into that? We're going to take a break for some commercials. Hope you'll join us when we come back. Hi, it's Shawnee McNeil at South First Bank. This is a great time for you to buy or build a new home or maybe refinance your present mortgage. Our rates are the lowest they've been in years, and that means saving you money. We've been helping our customers become homeowners in this area for nearly 70 years, and we can make our approvals right here in the office, and that means saving you time. We're located here in downtown Sylacauga. Come in and find South First, a better way to bank. Member FDIC, an equal housing lender. Marble City Pharmacy in Sylacauga is your destination for the highest quality health care. Our knowledgeable pharmacists are always available for questions about your medications or advice on taking over-the-counter products and supplements. Our friendly staff can assist you in choosing from our full lines of compression hose and medical equipment. And don't forget our gift department. We have a great selection of unique gifts for every occasion. Stop by today and see us. Marble City Pharmacy, where your health comes first. Coosa Valley Medical Center, one of the top 10 hospitals in Alabama, is also Sylacauga's largest employer. Services from the emergency room, to surgery, to cancer treatment, to post-stroke care. You won't believe what's right in your backyard. It's Coosa Valley Medical Center in Sylacauga. So, if you're sick, in Alabama, choose one of the top 10 hospitals in Alabama. That is Coosa Valley Medical Center. 
Hello and welcome back to Library Connection. I'm talking with our library director, Tracy Thomas. We're talking about the history of the Baby Comer Library. We're about to get into the WPA involvement and things, but I wanted to ask, has it always been the Baby Comer Library or how did we get that name? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, that is a significant part of this um, WPA okay. era that we're about to talk about. And, and for people that may not know what the WPA was, it was the Works Progress Administration mm -hmm. and, and that was a project under FD are. And it was really where they were doing a lot of public works and they were taking people who may not have been skilled laborers and they were teaching them skills. And so um, they were building uh, public buildings, they were yeah. building roads. So they used these people as laborers mm -hmm. in different areas, different facets. And this was an effort to rebuild the economic growth um, after the Great Depression. Right. So what a wonderful, exciting time mm -hmm. for these people to be in where they know, hey, good things are happening. Yes. Where we know we've got this library. Well, the library accommodated some of the WPA workers. And the, it kind of caught the attention of the, the mm -hmm. WPA um, projects. And they said, you know what? We're really impressed with the library. We're yeah. really impressed with um, what's happening in Sylacauga. Let's make this project an example and let's build them a, a new library. <laughs> and so at the time, you know, they're still bouncing around from room to room in different buildings mm -hmm. in town. And so they they decided to give $28,000 um, to build a new library in Sylacauga, which is the library that it was the museum's yeah. building currently. And so um, they also, the, the Comer family, and this ties into the question you were asking, mm -hmm. the Comer family provided $5,000 for furnishings on that project. Mm -hmm. And up until this point, it had been the Sylacauga Public Library. Okay. But when the Comer family made their donation, the wording that was in the history book says, in recognition of the constructive spirit of Governor Comer and members of his family, the library board decided to rename it the B.B. Comer Memorial mm -hmm. Library. And so that's that's. Just I, that's a nice piece of our history mm -hmm. because people ask how, and this is another partnership with yes. people in the community that mm -hmm. felt like this was important for our town to have this yeah. library, and they made this significant donation right. to get furnishings. Now, the WPA project, and, and this is this is another thing to me that when I read it, I thought, wow, this was, mm -hmm. you know, in the 1930s. Okay. And so the WPA project actually provided the library staff, and they have had a paid librarian. They paid for three junior librarians. Okay. They paid for two book binders, and they paid for five book repairers. Oh, my goodness. That's, That's a about lot. That's the a large same staff. size library staff we have today. Mm -hmm. And so they really did value what the library was doing for the community. Yeah. And um, so they provided these, these employees. Now, what's even more significant is what they paid them. They paid them $1,200 a year. Okay. But that in our in our currency is the equivalent of about twenty one thousand dollars a year. Okay. So that that was a, that was a very very good salary, and these people had good jobs thanks to the to the WPA. That just shows how important they felt a library was for our community, and that's great. Absolutely, <laughs> and the the Silicaga <clears throat> Library WPA project was the second largest WPA project in the state of Alabama. And so there were, you know, they dedicated the new building on November the 21st, 1939, during the March of Progress Day. And so it was a very significant celebration because there were some other things um, that they were celebrating that day. They were also celebrating Alabama Power's completion of the Sylacauga Electric Substation. Okay. And they were also celebrating some new paved highways that were coming into the city. It was a very big day. It was a very big day. <laughs> and they celebrated this day at Sylacauga High School wow. Auditorium. Uh -huh. And so um, when the when the celebration was over, the doors to the public library were open for the oh, first time wonderful. right next door. Yeah. So that I, that's I would love to have seen some of that celebration that day, oh, yeah. the excitement I'm sure that there was there. Um, there were several librarian changes. We have people occasionally will say, well, you know, who were some of the librarians? And I want to mention some of those names. Um, that's Miss Carl Harrison, um, Nellie B. Yance, Miss Mary Pittman. And then in 1952, Miss Dorothy Lee came, and she was the librarian. And I actually had somebody the other day say, oh, I remember, you know, oh, I remember good. her. I remember going in there. I remember when she got on to me. Oh, well, <laughs> so I, <laughs> part of what she does. So oh, they, and then remember. under Miss Lee, 
the library had 12 really good steady years of growth. So they finally, you know, have this nice building. They're in a, you know, in a permanent home and the, the library programs are growing and right. services are carrying on and they're doing children's programming. You know, summer reading oh, okay. was a mainstay. Oh, even I'm glad to then. hear that. <laughs> I know it's been going on a long time. That's great. Well, and a couple of, of things that may sound familiar are the Sue I. Brown room mm -hmm. yeah. and the Leonard Goldberg room. Mm -hmm. Those rooms were part of the library even when it was at the museum's location oh, um, in the older building. So those rooms were brought forward with us to mm -hmm. the new library and, and they said that the things that took place in those rooms were showing films, um, mm -hmm. listening to music, having summer reading programs, mm -hmm. and that that actually became um, you know, a center of Sylacauga community life right. um, to have this library there with these different activities. Now, Miss Lee resigned in the summer of 1964 mm -hmm. to accept a college at Converse College, and that's when we got Miss Carolyn Goff. Mm -hmm. And Miss Goff was from Rockford. A lot of people know the Goff family. Okay. And Miss Goff actually came to the library by way of the Alabama Public Library Service. And the Alabama Public Library Service, for people that are watching that may not mm -hmm. know, um, the Public Library Service is our state agency in Montgomery. And so Ms. Goff actually worked there and came to us from them. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, Ms. Goff came in and she soon experienced what other librarians mm -hmm. had experienced, which was needing a place to grow, that right. the program had become so significant in Sylacauga that they mm -hmm. needed a place to go. And then under Miss Goff's direction, and we always like to, to tell this part, Miss Goff had a lot of vision, she had a lot of foresight, and she went to the city and she said, you know, we're outgrowing even this building, we're gonna need a place to go. And the city secured a spot in the heart of downtown, which is where our library is currently. Yeah. So how wonderful that even then they were yes. looking at where can this library go and still be the heart of this community. Yes. Great and location. So great, great location right across from City Hall. So they secured this location. And in 1976, you know, Miss Goff had just been kind of sitting there, you know, waiting. She was, you know, she had already secured the location. She's kind of waiting for the right opportunity to come up. Where can we go? How are we going to get the money to build yes. a new building? And uh, a federal grant came available in 1976. So she worked on that grant and she applied for it. And the bad news is they were turned down oh. in 1976 for that grant. Wow. But the good news is in 1977, they were awarded that grant oh, for the new library. Keep trying. Keep trying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that is wonderful. This is what I, I, I remember as a small girl coming to the, the museum when, when coming to the library when it was at the museum and I remember being here for this, the new building dedication. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, we're going to break for commercials and come back and talk about um, more about the library. <laughs> Looking for a great pre-owned car or truck? Come visit the Collins family at Stop and Shop Auto Sales. Owned and operated by Bobby and Anderson since 1996, and now with the newest member of the team, George Collins. We specialize in quality trucks from Ford and Chevy, and also carry a variety of dependable cars and SUVs. All of our vehicles are professionally serviced and checked for safety and reliability. So come see us today in Sylacauga at 230 West 1st Street, or call 256-249-0322. In Alabama, there are two things we take serious, football and barbecue. And at August Barbecue, we take our business serious. Our meat is smoked daily to give you the freshest and best quality. Ask about our daily vegetable specials. And don't forget about our beef brisket served up every Thursday and Friday. We have a great outdoor seating area to enjoy the best live music around every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. Great service, great atmosphere, and great food. August Barbecue, you can taste the difference. CallTheShields.com is the solution to pest and termite problems. APS shields your home from termite infestation, unwanted pests, mold and water intrusion, sagging floors, and unhealthy lawns. Visit CallTheShields.com to schedule your free evaluation. That's CallTheShields.com to schedule your free evaluation. Alabama Professional Services, protection for your home. 
Hello and welcome back to Library Connection. I'm talking with our Library Director, Trusty Thomas, about the history of the library. We've made it to 1977 <laughs> when Miss Goff was awarded a grant and um, take it from there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was pretty significant because, you know, I think your victory is so much sweeter when you've experienced a little bit of defeat. So. <laughs> and so uh, they applied for the grant in 1976 and they were turned down. Mm -hmm. And then in 1977, they reapplied again and they were awarded $592,000 through a federal grant, and then the city kicked in $218,000, and that helped build what we refer to as the 79 building because okay. it was completed in 79 mm -hmm. because we're asked so often, now, when was the original building built? Right. 79. 79. So it's the 79 building. Yeah. Um, so the 79 building, the funds were secured. The building was built on that prime piece of property that Miss Goff yes. got the city to secure. And the name changed again at that time because the Comer family once again continued their legacy mm -hmm. of helping and they stepped in and they provided $75,000 to buy new furnishings because, you know, this was a 21,000 square mm -hmm. foot building, needed a lot of furniture, needed a lot of bookshelves. And so they stepped in and donated $75,000. And to signify um, the change in services because so many new services mm -hmm. had been added. The library was doing so much more. Um, they called it the B.B. Comer Memorial Library and Information Center. Okay. So that's where that name change came from. And then um, the doors officially opened on that building in March 1979. And Dr. Shirley Spears came to the library in 1984. Okay. So this building had been open and operational for about five years when she came along. And you know, she walked into a really wonderful um, situation. Yes. This, you know, this nice, new, beautiful mm -hmm. building. Programs and services are beginning to thrive mm -hmm. because you've had the direction of somebody who was building yes. those programs We're and those growing. offerings. Mm -hmm. and, and, but Dr. Spears looked around and realized, you know, hey, there's going to come a time where we're going to experience the same growing pains that the other librarians right. have experienced. So in 1991, Dr. Spears formed the B.B. Comer Memorial Library Foundation mm -hmm. um, to start raising funds, to, st to start paving the way, if you will, mm -hmm. toward the day when library service needed to expand yes. again. So um, in 2002, the library decided it was time um, funds had been raised and we had to leave that building and you know that was hard because oh. we knew when we left <laughs> yeah. they were just going to tear it to pieces and we knew we were going to go back into a, a great new <clears throat> building but it was really hard and you know we, we have about a hundred thousand books and you have to oh. pare that down to just what you can take with you oh, and you kind of feel difficult. like refugees just okay. what you can take on your back you know what oh. can we get out of here that's the most important right. um, the most to, just to continue providing the quality service yes. that we wanted yes. to offer mm -hmm. to the people in Sylacauga. So, you know, we ran a lot of reports and looked at our records and mm -hmm. decided which books were the most important to take right. and, you know, how to, and then we had other questions, you know, how do we store this book collection in climate controlled storage oh. to protect everything from any kind of damage because we knew we would be out a year or more. Right. Um, and we, we were lucky enough that the old Western Auto building, which is now the dance studio yes. in town, uh -huh. it was available. And we were able to go down and get that building. And we had to do a lot of cleanup. You know, it had been used as an auto sure, repair yeah. shop. And, yeah. you know, we had to scrub floors and <laughs> we had to set up shelving. And so we had to do a lot of dismantling in the old library, moving down to the new library. Just to make it work. Just to make, to make it, it work. work and because it was very important for us not to close the library doors during oh, this time. Um, some libraries just have to vacate and stay closed while renovations mm -hmm. happening. But we were very blessed to have this location to, to offer services. It was and, great. I remember coming <laughs> in there. It was wonderful. Well, you know what made it so great? What made it so great was Dr. Spears was very insistent on taking things like pieces of the art collection. Because when people walk into the front door of the library, they say, like you said, mm -hmm. oh, how wonderful. This is a great library. Um, and, and it's the things like the art collection. It's the yes. things like the marble collection. Yes. It's the beautiful facility mm -hmm. that make that a well-rounded experience. Mm -hmm. And she still wanted people to have this feel when they walked in, yeah. even the temporary location. Right, so right. It's still the library. <laughs> it's still the library. And we agonized yeah. over where to hang pictures. Oh, and, know. you know, so it was, it was a good experience. But we mm -hmm. learned a lot. We learned... You know, how do you pack books up to move? And, you right. know, we started at the beginning with the A's and we put those 
books in the right. boxes. And then we realized when you unpack them, oh no, you should have started at the end and put those oh. in first. <laughs> so when you well. unpack, so it took a little trial and error, wow. but but we got it, you know, we got it right. And, mm-hmm. and I think what we have to show for it now yes. is such a wonderful facility. And and so this facility opened its doors um, in December of 2003, and we had the official dedication on April the 4th, uh, 2004. Right. And um, it, this, looking back at it, that whole experience was wonderful to get to witness the transformation mm-hmm. from you know, what Sylacauga had. And we had some true visionaries in this town, in this community oh, yes. that, that got us here. And, and, and I said it before, and I will say it again, you know, people say all the time, you know, why do you need such a big library in such a small town? Well, I think when you listen to what people in your community mm-hmm. want, and what they're willing to work for, right. it shows that this is the cooperative spirit of people in our community. Yes. Those first groups got together thanks to the Rotary Club's vision. They mm-hmm. jumped on board. They helped to see it through. And then when the Library Foundation was formed and Dr. Spears was raising funds, you know, two-thirds of the money for this project was raised privately through the foundation. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a testament to what people right. wanted in their community, right. what they wanted to be here. Right. And I can tell you, I know, speaking for the upstairs at the library, the ch- children's department, so many children's books. People come up and are amazed. And, you know, you can always find something to read. And children love a, a great selection. And we have it, you know, early readers and nonfiction. They just love it. So it's wonderful to have a lot of books and a lot of room. They do. And, you know, one of the things that I will mention is that, you know, people have asked, how, how did you know when you reached that point that you were sort of outgrowing your building, that it was time It was time to go? Mm-hmm. You know, we, we had the whetstone room upstairs, and that room was designed to hold about 60 people. That's, oh. you know, sitting in chairs auditorium style. That's not with a table in front of you where you could enjoy your brown bag right. lunch because <laughs> yeah. we had a brown bag lunch program. Mm-hmm. And so we had to do the brown bag lunch part in another room, and then we would come back into the, the whetstone room for the actual oh. program. So you've got a room that's designed to hold about 60 people comfortably Mm -hmm. in chairs. And and I remember we had Governor Albert Brewer here um, for one of the brown bag programs. And it was just one of those things we had tried different times for the brown bag. We had tried doing them in the evening. We had tried... And we finally found a time that worked. Lunchtime was the perfect time right. um, to do the program. We had the audience coming. We had great speakers signing mm-hmm. up to come. And then we, we had Governor Brewer there that day, and we just kind of looked around the room, and we realized we've got about 90 people in this room. Oh, and and we mm-hmm. were having, Donna Dickey was at the door, and she was yeah. having to turn people away. Oh, yes. And so and we time. realized <laughs> it's, it's time. You know, we want to be able to give people what they want. Yeah. And we still continue that. We have wonderful programs. And I want to mention real quick before we go that we do have one more um, program in our Brown Bag series coming up on Wednesday, November the 1st. And that's Dolores Hydock. We always close out with her. Wonderful. Dolores is going to kind of lead us into the Thanksgiving season um, with two, I call them warm stories because they're really warm, sweet stories that she's going to tell. And then um, I also want to mention to people that are watching, you know, we also have our Christmas concert that we do. Yes. And so that'll be December the 15th. And it's just a real treat because Chris Phillips will come home. Oh, good. And Chris Phillips will come home and sing some Christmas songs. And Robin will accompany him on the piano. Um, His wife will be coming with him. Virginia will be coming to play some tunes. And so we're really excited about that and hope people will join us for that. Yes, we're getting ready for the Christmas season. I think it's almost time. Well, thank you so much, Tracy, for joining us on Library Connection. And we hope you'll come in and see us at the library.